Amen. Praise the Lord. Hebrews chapter 12. We're on the air today. So we'll be speaking to those that are on the air. More specifically today uh, with the word. All right, Hebrews 12. When you found it, please stand with us. <laughs> Are you ready? Two verses, verse 14 and then 15, we'll read together. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Together. Looking, Looking diligently, diligently lest any man fail of the grace of God, God lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you and, and thereby many be defiled. Defile. All right, now for the sake of clarity, I see they have a, um, I think this is a semicolon at the end of defile. So let's go on till we get to a period. How about that? The next verse. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. All right, we'll pause there. Dear Lord, thank you for the word of God, and we're asking now that you will amplify it. Help us to understand the essence of what you want said today. Bless those that are listening by way of television, Lord God. Speak to our hearts again. And Lord God, we give you praise and honor. Thank you again for all of your mercies. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. I thank you so much, Lisa, for uh, reiterating what... It's so vital. We oftentimes don't understand when God is speaking, who's really speaking. We don't give him the real honor, you know, as we allow him to have place in our hearts. Sometimes we kind of treat it like this is just coming from man. And, um, but uh, I, I was happy to hear what Lisa was saying uh, it is so important that we listen when God is speaking. And I had a friend that uh, he was working with television. And during his secular training, they trained him to be able to bring out a certain character of the people that he's video, and in this case, how many remember the uh, Western Wyatt Earp? I know you, some of you don't want to tell your age, so you don't want to. <laughs> but then, what about uh, Gunsmoke? So, <clears throat> but he was assigned to men like that, and they told him that he needed to, through the camera produce an image. So he spent a lot of time with these people studying their character. And so when he got ready to film, he had to project that image of a tough Westerner, Matt Dillon. James Arness. But he had to, through the camera, show the image. Little did he know that after he got saved, God was going to use that for his glory. So when he got saved and filled, God gave him assignment to listen for the Holy Spirit speaking through people. And so he had learned something very vital. And 
I remember sometimes he would be, we'd be in a setting and some people would get up to make some comments and he'd sit there and he'd be listening. And all of a sudden, he would run and get his camera. He was listening for the voice of Christ. And he did a wonderful job. He did a wonderful job. So saying all that to say that uh, we have to be sensitive enough to hear when God is speaking by his spirit. Isn't that right? And once we do that, then we must give heed to it with all respect that it is God talking to us. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And in essence, that's what Lisa was saying. So let's give God another hand clap for Lisa. Praise the Lord. <laughs> believe in his prophets, and so shall you be established. Believe in, or believe in, I forgot how that go, but believe in his prophets, so shall you. You, um, how did that go? Prosper. So it's hearing God through his mouthpiece. It's very vital in knowing when God is talking. And so with all that said, Hebrews 12, you know what we've been talking about this week, right? Spirits of rebellion and bitterness and religious spirits. And the Lord said they were old and settled. Been around for a long time. They got whiskers. The gray hairs. And if they're that way, you got to keep in mind that it's not going to happen overnight that you get free from these things, right? Because some of it has so become a part of us. Attitudes. You know, they've become so much a part of us that we actually cannot distinguish clear enough to understand that this is a spirit with his influence. So, what are you saying to the Lord? The Lord is saying, it may take a little longer to uproot spirits. Uh, let's say a spirit of rebellion. A person may have been operating that way ever since they uh, rebelled against their mom or dad. And so, it just became a part of them. And so, now they rebel against authority. Because that spirit came in. And he was not, had not departed. So they, they come to the Lord and so on. And as they come to the Lord, uh, that spirit is there. And so if they hear something they don't like, then that spirit clamor up and say, you ain't got to listen to that. You ain't got to listen to that. But when it's coming from the Lord, yes, you do. Isn't that right? And so he says, um, um, how does he say it? He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. If I am not growing, and if after 10 years I am doing the exact same things, still getting mad at the same things, then that means I may, I may have something operating that's hindering my spiritual progress. It makes sense? And so when we hear the Lord, we want to hear with our spiritual ears and uh, so this week was so wonderful because there were those that found some release and that's what God is all about you know not what God is attempting to take you into you really don't know the path that God has for you unless you submit to what he's saying one of the things that I am so clear about is we, it takes sometimes, if that doesn't happen, we wander round and round like children of Israel, right? And the same trials, the same thing happening, the same frustration. But once that bitterness gets dealt with, 
we're able to move to another level in the Lord. So if we are not growing as we should, some are growing, no question about it. But if, if you feel that way that you're really not growing, that means your ears have been clogged. So God wants to help us to become more sensitive. And look what he says in Hebrew. He said, follow peace with all men. That has to do with pursuing, seeking after, eagerly, earnestly endeavoring to acquire. So it implies that it's not always easy to keep peace with people, right? So that means it may take some dying, as you heard earlier, to self to be at peace with the neighbor. Isn't that right? But the goal must always be kept in mind. I am here and you are here to love, right? So that means the unselfish part of my nature, the new nature, wants to love everybody. My old nature wants to love only those that treat me nice or right. So which nature will I yield to? I am... The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. So I do not operate based on that old nature anymore. All of the admonitions in the epistles tells us that we have a new nature now. So I say new nature. So we must know who we are. We belong to God. We, uh, the, the word Christians means Christ-like. Anybody want to wear that badge? So when we say we're a Christian, we are wearing that badge, just saying that we are Christ-like and we're becoming. So follow peace with all men. This is what he said. And holiness, follow holiness, right? Follow uh, uh, um, holiness means uh, drawing near to God with a cleansed Conscience, drawing near to God. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man will see the Lord. Right? Now, so the first chapter, first verse deals with how we operate uh, guarding our own lives and keeping ourselves in check as far as our conduct and our character, right? The second part deals with our treatment of others and care for others. All right? Good enough for you? All right, so let's deal first of all with the first part. He says, follow peace with all men in holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. So now our goals in mind is to uh, have a peaceful relationship with humankind. Uh, by this uh, love shall all men know that you are my disciples when you have Love one to another. So that's a badge of identity. Somebody say identity. identity. So my badge of identity is different from that of the world. The world uh, loves its own, of course. And the world may not necessarily love you because you are a, of a different spirit. If the world loves you and you love the world, then there's something a little wrong with that, right? Because we have a different spirit, right? And uh, so um, here he's saying... Follow peace with all men in holiness, drawing near with God with a true heart, cleansed conscience here, without which no man shall see the Lord. Very powerful statement, without which no man shall see the Lord. Wow, Jesus. Now, so I was thinking about what he said prior to that in chapter 12. He was talking about the Lord um, chastening us or disciplining us. Or let's say it like this, training us. That's a better word. Training us. How many of you ever felt God training you? I've heard God say that to me, I'm training you. What he's saying is that I'm bringing you, you in conformity, more conformity to my nature. The Christ-like nature. So 
you may find God training you as well. And I want to just kind of reiterate again to the elders and leaders of the church at large, first and foremost, okay? This is for all of us, but while we were studying, I felt the Lord saying, the elders of the church. I said, well, elders of the church. First, I went to live where it's like, but he was talking not only where he was talking about the elders of the church, the whole Hampton Road, Tidewater, and wherever this message may go. So th this is a time when God is first and foremost dealing with his leaders. You say, well, why? It's, it's always an order. And, and, and who was that mentioned the order? At least it mentioned order, right? So before God deals with his parishioners or body, he has to deal with the leaders first. Are you with me? So he has to get, once he gets us straight, then what he does for his people is going to be helpful because so many times people stumble over little things, but they're just immature. And they're babies, right? Doesn't mean they're not Christians. And so we have to come down a little lower, right? We can't reach them on a plateau. Y'all got to hear what I'm saying now because I know I'm telling the truth. So the Lord said we have to come down as leaders. Leaders, if you listen to what I'm saying here, uh, uh, this is what the Lord said. I'm dealing with my leaders, and, and particularly in the area that this is reaching. And like, uh, you know, you have the horror stories of how some leaders operate. It should not be. So the Lord is dealing with his leaders, and, and uh, we are the ones that he set up to teach by example and precept. Are you with me? It's not enough just to be able to have a knowledge of the word. We must have a life consistent with the word of God. And so God says, I'm dealing with the elders of the church. Too many people are stumbling because elders sometimes feel like they're invincible. Now, you got to know this. I'm an elder too. So if I'm talking this way, I'm applying it to myself. I'm not standing aloof and saying, you elders. I am saying I am a part of eldership. So first and foremost, God began to deal with us to become more Christ-like. More humble in spirit. More meek. Is that right? This is what the Bible talks about. Paul said, I, I, with all meekness and long suffering. That's how he operated as, a, as an apostle. So, so there's, that thing applies to us. And Jesus said to them, he said, come unto me. He said, uh, all you that are labor and labor, he said, my, I, I'm, I'm meek and lowly in heart. You're going to find refreshing for your soul. Now, I can't tell you that. I can't say come unto me because I'm meek. I can't because I'm not Jesus. But what I do what I can say is follow me as I follow him. Isn't that right? And that's what Paul said. He didn't say just follow me. He said follow me as I follow Christ. So this example, he said to Timothy, Timothy, be an example. Even as a young person, be an example. Isn't that right? People need examples. People need models. Isn't that right? That's what they need. So if they see uh, me operating crazy and then I'm trying to tell people how to go. I can't lead them because I'm not walking right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So God gets the leaders first. So he's saying, I want you to operate right. I don't care how many people that are not operating right. Don't you be one of those. You got the word. You know what the word says. You know who's the, who's the judge. Isn't that right? You know who's the righteous judge. You know who you're going to stand before. I don't care what people say. Let them live like that if they want to live that late. But if you know the truth, you have an obligation under God to live right. That's what God is saying to us as leaders. What I found out, y'all, is I can't live the way I want to live unless the way I want to live is in line with the word of God. I can't do it. Because God, the righteous judge, is observing. 
And if I do something that God doesn't like, then God ain't going to you. He's going to me. And when I stand before God, say, God, those sheep got on my nerve, Lord. I tell you every day, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't do this, man. I ain't never had a bunch of people like, and God's, like he said, I'm just looking at the condition of my sheep. That's what I'm looking at. If the condition of my sheep are deplorable, then you need to check yourself and see how you're leading. Now, now y'all, so, you, you, some of you might, they might be smiling and say, oh, Lord, Jesus, he's preaching now, you know. What I'm saying is this. As the Lord was saying to me, I said, God, what do you want me to say to the, um, to the broadcast? I said, this is an audience here. I'm preaching to, to more people now. So I kind of, kind of let it go. Went on and um, Juan and I was in there praying uh, uh, for the service. And then we started, he said Hebrews. So we went to Hebrews. And after we started studying, I said, well, how come? Then he said, well, you asked me what to share with the Hampton Rose Tide Water. So I wanna, I, I'm dealing with leaders. God says, I'm disciplining, I'm training leaders by way of chastening. You say, well, what, what, what does he mean? What's that, what's that doing? Sometimes he's letting fiery trials come our way. I remember that just recently what I've been going through, the Lord uh, uh, was challenging me, really challenging me. And so, you know, when you, when you get this going along good and everything's always good, you, you, you kind of, you don't really, I don't know how to say this. You, you, it's easy to kind of get the wrong idea. So anyway, so when this thing started to happen to me, I said, okay, Satan is the rod of God. That's what the Bible said. Satan is the rod of God. So if Satan's on your track doing stuff that you eat, logical deduction. Maybe you need a little spanking, you know what I'm saying? Tight, but it's right. I'm telling you the truth. I'm not, I'm, I'm really, really trying to show you what, what the Lord, how God's been saying. So I was like, come on, God, just move this thing. This thing is interfering. No, he said, he said, just, just endure. Just endure hardness. That's a good soldier. Don't be crying out to, Lord, please, Jesus. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can laugh now, but when it first started, that was no laughing matter. You know what I'm saying? I was like, call the prayer warriors. Call them up right now. Let's <laughs> More they prayed, the worse it got. I was like, hey, you guys praying or what? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Why? Because that prayer wasn't going to move because the Lord, the Lord allowed me to go through it. God said, it's, it's, it's training time now. I'm going to train you. Train you. Got to come down a little bit. Now, don't y'all agree with me? All right. <laughs> Amen. God is good. So, but I love it. I love it. God, I love it because it starts to yield the peaceable fruit of righteousness. More recently, I'm I'm, I'm really telling on myself. You want to hear? I mean. God said, he said, he said, there's some unconfessed sins. I said, what? Okay, Lord, what is it? What is it? He told me a couple of errors, so don't ask me. I'm not going to tell you. But, <laughs> but the fact was that there was no way I could actually see it unless I, when God said it, I say, what is it, Lord? I want to know what it is. And because he knew I wanted to know what it was, he told me. And then I repented and repented of that. But it made me even better. 
Y'all hear what I'm saying? We don't have to run from God's chastening. We don't have to get all bent out of shape and frustrated. God allows these things for a purpose. No chastening seems to be, 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 be healthy or good, or good, I should say. But afterward, what it does, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness. Everybody that's truly trying to follow God, you love it. Like the testimony when our sister Rose shared. She shared, and when she shared about the bitterness, and when God began to allow her to see it, and then she cried out to God. He told her what to do, go this, this, and so. And then she opened her spirit, and she got some help, all because of him, all because she listened and obeyed him, right? So, now the good part about it is she doesn't have to be, keep that bitterness. She's free from that or fear. You know what I'm saying? And this is what God was saying. It's like you don't have to go through this bitterness for 10, 10 and 15, 20. You don't have to do that. God says, I'm here for you. I'm here to heal the broken places in your lives. And so if you don't get anything else, remember, God is saying, uh, follow peace with all men in holiness without which no man see the Lord. So there's things that he's doing because he loves us to bring us to the goal. Now, the last part of this is looking diligently. And as we looked at that, it was different from uh, what I thought it was. It says overseeing. over their lives that they do not fail of the grace of God or fail here. And this says me left behind in a race or fail to reach the goal. The grace of God is here for everyone, right? It's here. But some people don't understand and you, and you got people that are weak. And so how do we treat those that are weak and those that are failing, those that are, seem to be uh, what a good friend of mine called trifling? I won't, that he said that, but, but the, my point is this year, how do we respond to them? We must see them as God sees them, right? God wants to help them. God wants to help them. So as leaders, this is what he's saying. He said, I want, first of all, to, to adjust your attitude. I don't want you to be pharisaical. What do you mean pharisaical, Brother Herring? Self-righteous. What I found out about self-righteousness is this, that when I'm self-righteous, I find fault in others. I see myself better than others, right? But when I'm, when I'm, when I'm, when I'm humble or meek, then I have compassion for others. Isn't that right? So self-righteous, the scribes and Pharisees were self-righteous, and everything Jesus did, it wasn't good enough. He criticized everything he did, and, and, and so self-righteous spirit will always look down upon others. The man that went to pray said uh, at the temple in Luke 18, Father, I thank you that I'm not like this publican, sinner. You know, here he is up here begging and knowing he ain't living nothing. So he said, I fast twice a week. I give tithes of everything that I have. Ain't you proud of me? You ought to be proud of me because I do everything you tell me. And the old man sitting there that he said he wouldn't, shouldn't even be there came and smote his breast. Couldn't go close because he didn't feel worthy. He said, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. So he humbled himself in the presence of God. And God said, I tell you, that man went down justified, declared righteous. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And what are you saying, Brother Heron? With all that I know how to say, God says we have to always keep a check on our lives. Because sometimes when you least expect, 
you can be proud and you can miss helping people. And what the Lord made me see is there's some people you can't, can't help when you're proud. You have to come down. Condescend to people of low degree. Pastors, shepherds, apostles, prophets, I'm talking to you. God's talking to you. God says we have to come down. We have to come down. If we're going to reap the harvest, we've got to come down. There are people who don't know their right hand from their left, and God wants to send them. Sometimes it takes longer for them to get it than others. But we have to come down. We have to have the care and the love for them, knowing that Christ died for them like he died for us. Isn't that right? That's what he's saying. That's what he's saying. And so uh, all over this uh, Hampton Road Tidewater area, it's like God is saying, uh, I, this is a part of what I'm doing. It's not everything I'm doing, but this is a part of what I'm doing in the body of Christ. I'm bringing people in conformity to the likeness of Jesus Christ. And I'll tell you, you're going to love every minute after it's over, right? Notice I say after it's over. You'll love it because it changes us. It changes us. And it helps us to see when, where we couldn't see before. We, you know, and I, I'm discovering this is that when you're kind of a little bit too high, you can't see like you could down in the low place. You can't see. Your, your concepts are different. But when you get a little bit lower, and you say, well, you know, you may read the Bible and say, okay, I'm going to get a little lower here. I got it, Lord. I got it. But then uh, you can't get it alone like that. But he's going to help us, right? He gives us something that stings us, vexes us, makes us a little mad. You know what I'm saying? And then, uh, you know, so when we find out that we can't pray it away, it's going to stay there a little longer because God said, no, it's serving a purpose. What the devil means for harm, God works it for good, right? And so he works. And then at his right time, he moves it out of the way. After it has accomplished, like James said, let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entire, lacking nothing, right? So if you're going through something that's distasteful, don't worry about it. Just, just, just cheer up, rejoice, and know that God may allow it for a purpose, but you're coming through it. You are coming through it, and you're going to be made so much better in the process. This is the end time now. And God has an end time harvest that he must bring in. And this harvest it's going to be by the Holy Spirit. He's just going to send people. He's going to send people. Lives that are broken and battered and bruised. And they must experience the love of God. They must experience the love of God. Not only leaders, but now he's talking to all of us as well, right? So if we've been in the faith. I went one and I, we were praying, talking about it. If you've been in the faith... Faith 30 and 40 years, and um, well, you might have been in the way a long time. <laughs> but it's so important now. I, I, can you see the love that God has for us? Wow, the very thing you pray for that you don't know how it's coming, that's what he's saying. I want to do it. And I'm going to do it. I'm doing it for you. And boy, it is good. The more you go down, the purer you're going to begin to see things. Boy, when you get to the place where you, the place where you can see a little bit more like Jesus see, you see how humanity is hurting so bad. They're suffering. And God needs a heart of compassion. Everybody hear what I'm saying? He needs a people of compassion, people that care. And I tell you, I saw some things about me that I didn't like too good. 
It's, oh, no, not you, brother. Oh, yes, me, you know. Because God is the one that's righteous. He's the one that's good. He's the one that's holy. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. And I found out that, 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 that all of my righteousness, all of my holiness comes from he that is holy. And if my relationship is intact, stays intact, then he separates me because of who he is, because of the divine life that comes from him. I ain't got nothing in myself that can make me that way. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There's nothing in me yet, a little bit that I've learned, but I have to stay connected. I have to get from him what I need. Don't believe it, you try taking an item that needs the electrical juice and unplug it and try to see it work. It can't work, right? But once it's plugged in to the electricity on that wall, right? It gets the juice. That's the way it is with us. And so sometimes trials and bitterness and situations and circumstances get in our way and we start to uh, not going to the source and not drawing from the source of power and life and love. And so our love begin to wane. Our attitudes begin to increase negatively. Why? Because we're not drawing from the source of life as we ought to. And so God is saying, everything moves by me. You can't function on your own. We need him. And he'll energize us. He'll give you the juice. He'll give you the strength. He'll give you what you need. And you know, you, you can, you can, when you come out of that presence of God, after you spend some quality time with God, and if God shows you an area you need to con confess and repent, just do it. Isn't that right? Just do it. But you'll be the better for it. So what I'm saying is that, so the Lord's dealing with us as leaders right now, and uh, I'm a leader, so I'm not picking on nobody. I'm a leader, so he's dealing with me in the same way. But I'm telling you, the fruits that it will yield is worth it all. It's, it's, the, it's the thing that you've been praying for. It's the thing that you've been asking from God. Is God, God is partially answering the prayer in the way that he's doing. So he said, I'm bringing you closer to me, and I'm training you in things there that you haven't come into more and more of what the Christ-likeness, and so that the people can begin to see more of me and less of you. Isn't that right? Isn't that good? That's what we all want. Isn't that right? That's what we all been praying for, right? And so God is saying, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man will see the Lord. Paul tells Timothy, Timothy, you're a young person, but you be an example. He didn't say, okay, Oh, well, you know, it's going to take a lot of years before you can be right. You no, know, he said, Timothy, you're young, but you be an example in every area of your life. Young people, God is saying, you be an example. You know what God is saying. Isn't that right? Be an example. That's what he's saying. I'm able to keep you. I'm able to make you better because I love you so much and I want you to know. And this divine life is so good. It's so good. It's so good. It's so good. It's so good. It is good. Looking diligently has to do with caring for one another. The word looking has to do the same thing as like uh, in uh, Peter, um, First Peter 5, uh, uh, um, taking the oversight. That's what the study said. It means the same thing as having the oversight, you know, looking after people, looking after them. You know, weak believers, you know, follow, let's follow up. Let's find out how they're doing. Let's genuinely care for them, right? And uh, so we don't want to care uh, and pretending that we care. And we don't really care. We don't want to be that way. We want to care, having a heart of love for people. And that's what God is bringing us into. So if we don't have that, if we're not yet there, then God is allowing us to come closer to him. Trials are to bring us closer to him, right? 
That's what he said. When you face things, I expect you to come to me. You go to the Father. Lord, Lord, what's going on here? Lord, this is so frustrating. Lord, Lord, help me. I need more grace. I need more strength. And then God gives us some insight. He gives us an understanding. And it just blesses us so much. It's just so good to go with God. And I want to encourage you in these final words. Don't be discouraged. Be encouraged. If you're going through some things and, and you hear when he says, oh, God, I don't want to go to no more. Da, da, da. Don't worry about it. Remember, God is the processor. He's the processor. And, and, and ask him, like Wanda said earlier, ask him, Lord, what, what do you want me to learn out of this? God, what do you want me to learn out of this? Have that mind. And God so willingly will begin to talk to you because he wants to improve us all, right? I know that's what he's doing with me. He's talking to me about, I want your love to increase because I care for the body. I care for the flock of God. And so the leaders in this Hampton Roads, I'm not trying to make myself more than what I am, but the Lord said he's dealing with his leaders everywhere. Once he deals with us, and he's not only dealing with us, but he's dealing with his body because the Lord is soon to come. And because he's soon to come, there's certain things that has to go. I can't do the same. If I've got a gossip in spirit, I can't do it anymore, right? I can't do it because it's, God has said for 10, 20 years, that's not good. I can't have it. And the Lord said, he said, I, he said my people can't keep doing the thing that they've been doing for so many years. So now he's saying, I'm going to uproot these old settled spirits that had that's been operating in people's lives. So you're going to experience some real changes, and I'm going to experience some real changes within the next few months like we've never seen before. And because God is at work in our lives, uh, and you look at someone and say, you've got to go ahead and let him do what he's doing. That's what he's doing. Hallelujah. God is our refuge and strength, and he's a very present help in trouble. I'm thankful to God. I'm thankful to God. But it really yields the kind of fruit that all of us want. And uh, if I know that he's telling me something and I'm rebelling against it, it's got to be something that I don't understand that I'm doing. And I hope it's the same way with every one of you. If you're ignorantly rebelling against something God is saying, I hope that it's a situation where you really don't understand that he's saying this to you. Because we talked about rebellion on Wednesday, right? And rebellion is like witchcraft. So uh, I, I, I've said all that I believe that I need to say now. And, and, uh, but he said, he said, I needed somebody to, 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 to awaken my commandment. I needed somebody to do that. In other words, I want, I want to get the attention to my people. I, want, I don't want them to keep going like they've heard nothing and not change. So if you're asking, why are you preaching like this? This is what the Lord said. He said, I don't want my body to keep going as though I'm not speaking to them. that all right, y'all? Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We honor you, Lord. You know everything. I don't know nothing, but you do, Lord. So I thank you. I try to yield to you as best I understand. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, we've made some mistakes, Lord. But you correct them when you show them to us, Lord God. And we thank you. We give you praise. And we give you glory. Hallelujah. I surrender all. Hallelujah. I surrender all to you all, Father, all God, to Jesus, our blessed Savior. I surrender all. Would you stand on your feet with me now? We're going to just... Um, Thank the Lord for his kindness. Thank you for, for, for hearing uh, the word of God. I gave what I feel like God wanted me to share. And uh, so uh, my prayer is, and I know that the word does not return void, but it will accomplish what God sent it out to do. He's a great savior. You may be here today 
And if you heard all week and last week and whatever you heard about the, uh, bitterness, you've heard about unforgiveness, you heard about rebellion, you heard about these things. And, uh, you know, let's just ask the Lord, God, talk to me. And God says, first and foremost, what I want to do is heal now. I'm saying all this, he says, so that I can heal. But before I can heal, I want my people to know and see the need for healing. Isn't that right? God, I thank you for your healing power. I give you glory and I give you honor. Have your way, O oh kind sir. Have your way. Bless us as we are here today, Lord. You love us. You, you love us. And you're able to help us. Lord, and I ask you today to minister the life of Jesus. Oh God, to each and every one of us, we've fallen short so many times. But you pick us up. You lift us up. You strengthen us and give us the courage to go on. Someone need that courage and encouragement today. Someone need to know that you're able to heal. You're able to bless us. Do it for your own name's sake. Do it for your glory. Do it for your honor. I praise you now and I bless you. Lift up the light of your countenance. Let it shine on us. Grant us your peace. Have your perfect way now. In Jesus' name.